So hello and welcome folks. In today's show, we're gonna give you not just one, but two, but 20. 20 different tips on how to hire a contractor. If you don't hire a contractor properly, folks, you can be in all sorts of trouble, and we're gonna find out today why. So we have a special guest here today. His name is Frank, and I'm so glad to introduce you to Frank. My name is Frank. I've been part of the construction game since my dad took me to my first construction site when I was five. I'm here to help out as much as I can. So along with these 20 tips, we also wanna make sure we get a contactor's perspective. That's why Frank is here. So if that interests you, stick around for more. So folks, before we get started, I've known Frank for over five or six years and we've worked on at least three or four different jobs on different side, different state, different location. I wanna tell you guys a story I shared with you so you guys can understand how critical it is to find the right contractor. I was introduced to Frank through someone else. His name is Chris. Chris basically brought a whole team of people along with him and Frank was one of them. Well, it turns out that Chris wasn't paying Frank and other people who were also on the job on my property. What ended up happening is that one of the plumbers stopped the inspection on my property. So I could not sell the property, I could not rent the property, and we would end up in court. So I ended up paying some extra money, and also to the plumber who did the work on my property. So you have to be really careful, folks, that you don't wanna be in that situation. So my first question to Frank is, is, is a very common one. The first question people should ask is about references. So what do you think of that? When it comes to references, um, you definitely want to check to make sure that they've done this thing before. Somebody that's done really great contractor work, but you hired them to do a plumbing job might not have the references to back it up. So you might end up up a crick. Now, my second question, Frank, is that what about pictures? Because I want to see the proof is in the pudding. I want to see the before and after. Do you think that's important to ask a contractor? Yes. Um, I think pictures are worth a thousand words. Um, you want to see different jobs they've done in the past and photos of how they did them, um, what they started with and what they finished with. That way you can see what they're actually used to doing. So tip number three is to ask them how many projects they're working on. So why is that important is because you want to know these people are on 10 different projects. 20 different projects? Are they taking deposits from everybody and disappearing on you? I think that's a very, very key point because you want to make sure that if you're starting a project that your crew is not going to switch out midway through the project. So you want to make sure that they're going to be able to do it in a timely manner. Now, the other thing that comes to mind that I personally actually, and Frank also has experiences, is making sure that the contractor you're hiring, right, uh, can also pass the inspection. Yeah, permits are a key role for part. They're actually there more to protect you. Um, mm -hmm. You wanna make sure that they're able to pull their permits themselves and get all the inspections done themselves. That way you as the homeowner don't have to stress over that type of stuff and any good contractor will be able to get those permits real easy. Now, what if they resist getting a permit or what if they say, I don't wanna sign on a contract, I know. A that is one of those things where you might want to look for other options because if they're not willing to take that simple step maybe there's a reason they don't want to do it so the next one which may seem obvious but you really want to ask them are they a licensed contractor in the county or city you're working in licenses are a big thing making sure that they have the licenses because all right i travel to three different states normally west virginia virginia and maryland all three have different building codes you don't want to you want to make sure that they're not building you to Maryland building code and you're in Virginia and it's completely against it. Now, my next question, which may seem super obvious, but it has always come back to haunt me. And here's what it is. It's the driver's license. Do you want to know that they have a driver's license? They have a car they can get around. How important is that, Frank? That's actually very important because you don't want to hear that you get a phone call one day saying all your materials are sitting inside the road because the driver got pulled over and he didn't have a driver's license. And you want to be able to also verify they are who they say they are. So number seven is that will they work for a week to week pay so you can give them small amounts of money at a, at a time or are they going to ask for a lump sum, a large lump sum amount because they're dangerous to giving a large lump sum amount up front. There, I can see both sides of the spectrum. Um, a lot of companies do ask for that 25% down and a lot of times that's to cover materials. But in the same time, there are contractors out there that will do the week to week thing because they know that they are only going to be missing a week's worth of pay if something would go wrong and you decide to stop the project. Make sure your contract 
is written and detailed very well because that could save you. Do you think we should also, which is point number eight, also ask them how many times have they been late on a project? Yes, uh, you definitely want to know what their past history is, if they normally are finishing jobs on time, and it also goes back to number one about the references. Because if you're requiring the job to be done in a certain timely manner, you want to know it's going to be able to be done. And the next question, logical, would be, you know, what was the cause of delays, right? Was it because of them? Was it because the materials were late? Or was it because the owner didn't pay? So what was the reason for delays, right? Yeah, and that, that's another thing, because um, everything's been a little messed up due to last year and all like that especially materials weren't getting the job sites all like that so you'd want to know if it was just on ordering side of things or if it was because they're weren't were just working slower than what they had planned on working or not showing up at the job at all right yeah, yeah. that's not showing up is the biggest one because if they tell you they're going to be there on monday and then stroll in on wednesday that will hurt you being the homeowner. So we're on number 10, folks. We've made it through nine. Thank you for sticking with us. If you like the content, please smash the subscribe button. Please like and subscribe to our channel. We'll appreciate your support. The next one is very, very critical. You don't want somebody living in New Jersey coming to DC to work. You're never gonna get that work done. They're never gonna show up on the job on time and so on and so forth. So the next one is number 10, which is, do they live in the same state? Are they local to the state? Hiring local can work out in great benefits. Let's say there's an issue on the job. The contractor isn't that far away. So let's say if an inspector was coming out, he's not that far away to respond. Your response time is a lot quicker and on certain jobs, that's a big plus. Yeah, what if a window breaks? What if somebody breaks into the property? You can just call them, they live nearby, come to the property, solve the problem. So. A lot of benefits to this. So we're gonna grab some coffee, folks. We'll be right back. So tip number 11, I wanna make sure, do they have any criminal records? Yeah, criminal records is a big thing. You wanna make sure that you're not inviting a thief into your house when you're actually gone. That's a big issue right there. Now, what about, have they had any lawsuits against them or not? Do you think that's a problem? Because, you know, what if they have some lawsuits and people didn't like their work or they maybe did some poor job and burned the house down or vice versa? Lawsuits are definitely something you want to check in. Um, if you're in Maryland or anywhere, a lot of times you can actually find out who has open lawsuits, but you definitely want to ask the contractor. Normally they will be open, but that's one of those things you definitely want to check on. Yeah. And lawsuits are not a bad thing, folks. Lawsuits can happen for various reasons. Could be a disgruntled uh, you know, landlord not happy with their job or, or maybe a misunderstanding, right? The question is if they have too many lawsuits, that is a problem because then you know there's something shady going on, right? So the next one is folks, uh, you, know, you wanna make sure that the expertise or the job you're hiring them for, they have the expertise in that job. For example, Frank. Um, general contractors normally can cover general things, but they're not specified. So let, let's say you're trying to put in a new light in your bathroom. It'd be better to hire an electrician for that because they're going to be more versed in it. And same with plumbing. If you're trying to get a new bathroom put in your house, then you definitely want to hire a plumber and not a general contractor. Uh, so number 14, we're on number 14, folks. Number 14 is, do they have a certified company and is it a valid company under their name? Because that can make a big difference, as Frank will tell you right now. Um, LLCs are a limited liability company and most contractors actually run through an LLC. But here's the thing, you wanna make sure that the LLC and no matter what state you're in, you can actually check to see the standing of an LLC. You wanna make sure that it's in good standing. Otherwise, the company technically doesn't exist. Yeah, and you can check that online. We will post a link down here so you can see and figure out how to check for someone's LLC. The other thing you want to check, which I know people check for tenants and everybody else, you also want to check for a contractor and just you can just ask them, you don't have to actually do it, but ask them how's their credit because that shows that they can handle the money. Certain contractors are going to have an issue with that and I'll explain that here more in a second. But companies themselves actually have their own credit score and they, even a standing with the Better Business Bureau that you can research and they'll normally tell you what their standing is. But if a company denies saying, well, I don't want to tell you my credit score because that's my personal information, you can ask why. And if it's a believable true story, then go with it, go with your gut. So number 16, what makes them the best person for this job? 
Yeah, that that's going to be a thing where everybody to each their own. Um, most contractors will tell you, well, oh, I'm the cheapest or I'm the most experienced. You want to hear why they're actually doing it. You don't want to hire the cheapest person because you're going to get the cheapest amount of work. You want to hire somebody that the reason they're best for that job is because that is the job they have known as. It's the job they have done and they are going to take care of you. Yeah, and it all ties back together. We talked about the pictures, right? In you know, point number three. If you have the pictures before and after and you see their expertise, they're not gonna show you pictures of plumbing when they're really an expert in tiling. Number 17, always ask for separate, separate estimate for labor and material and make sure it's itemized so you can see the listing. And the main reason you wanna do that is there's a certain cap on how much we can actually charge up materials. So you don't want to say you're getting a 2x4 and actually end up paying almost triple the price for that 2x4 and then they also making labor cost off you and get this big bill at the end. So number 18, which is very critical to me as a developer, I want to know right every single week, not after a month, not after three weeks, weekly status report with pictures. What do you think of that? Yeah, and right? see that's the thing when you first talk with your contractor, these are things that you're going to go over with them and there. And if they have a problem sending you a weekly picture, which most contractors are taking pictures throughout the project anyways, um, for liability purposes. So they already have the pictures. It won't take them long to send them to you. So number 19, if your delivery is late, most people put on the contract. Let's say you want to finish a job in two months, but like it's been six months. So what do you do after six months? You can't just keep waiting for six months. If the delivery is late, you want to put in the contract some sort of a penalty fee, okay, a penalty fee. So then you can hold them liable for that. So it could be 5%, 10%, whatever you guys agree. Actually, that's not, not that uncommon. Uncommon. Um, the reason that people put that in there is because you want to keep them working ineffectively. If the, a contractor thinks they're going to be able to skate by dragging their feet, they're going to. So number 20, which is the most, you know, all the stuff we talked about 1 through 19 wraps it up in a contract. We want to make sure that you have a solid contract with this person and this person or this entity, this company agrees on some binding terms, scope, resources, timeline, all those things. So what do you think of that, Frank? That is actually a key point. Contracts are the backbone of any construction project. Um, any contractor that's worth his weight will have a contract drawn up and you need to read everything down to the fine print. I know a lot of people skim over it, but you want to make sure that you are also protected in that contract. And so now we're going to give you a bonus one on this. Okay, the number 21 that you want to ask them, it's very simple but very critical because it can cause all kinds of liability issues, is insurance, folks. You want to make sure that they have insurance and the people they're putting on your property are insured, and here's why. The main reason you want to do that is because let's say somebody goes on your property and gets hurt. Okay, well they're hired under the contractor that you hired. You want to make sure that they're covered and not trying to come after your insurance. But let's say you're out and they short a wire out and burn your house down. You want to make sure that you are completely covered and so are their employees. And also if they if they complete the job and they leave your house, what happens then? I mean, there has to be some warranty. Insurance usually takes care of those things. So once again, thank you, folks. I want to thank Frank for coming and joining us. I appreciate you, man. Nice seeing you again yep, nice after a long you, time. Um, just follow these tips and I'll help keep you out of a lot of sticky situations. Thank you very much. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.